Hello, hello, hello. It's Lady B and it is Sunday school time. Have you been studying your lesson? Have you been in your word? Have you been talking to the Lord? Are you growing in your faith? I sure hope so. Because you know what? We need to be growing in the Lord. We need to make sure that we're getting anchored, 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 and our roots are going down real, real, real deep in the Lord. Because of these times that we're living in. You know, I always bring that up because we, well, when I was coming up, they used to say we're living in the last days. Um, but I don't quite think we believe that because we've gotten real comfortable in, in this place called the strange land. Although in first Peter, he told the believers that we are just sore journeys. We're just so journeying. We're just going through. This is not our home. And so we want to take these lessons that we have been going through. We are in the last unit um, of, um, of this quarter. And it is, we're going to be talking about the great hope of the saints, this third unit, the great hope of the saints. And I pray your great hope is not the things of this world. We have gone through uh, this quarter. We have talked about in Isaiah and how God made some promises and how he had to judge sin, the sin that came into the world through Adam. And then in unit two, we talked about the word who was showing us Jesus Christ, who was showing us that God was going to restore all things. And so every miracle, everything that Jesus was doing was to show that God was not done, that he was going to do something greater. And our last lesson in chapter 14 of St. John, he said, I'm going to send the comforter who's going to give you peace, who's going to hold you and anchor you as you go through this world but now here we are and we are going to be talking about our new home in the book of revelation the revelation the unveiling of the end times that jesus gave to john we're going to be talking about that and we're going to be discussing the fact that this should be the hope of us believers jesus taking us to our new home. We're going to be talking about some things um, because there's some things that are going to have to happen before we get to that new home, we get to that new Jerusalem. But if we know that we are in Christ Jesus as new believers, we are guaranteed that we will be in that new home. So let's pray and then we're going to get into our lesson. Lord, we love you and we bless you. I thank you, God, for everyone who is joining me. Um, on this lesson, God, I pray that you would put in them an, an insatiable desire to study your word, to fellowship with you, to pray, to be with other believers, God, as we see the day approaching, that we would all draw closer to you. Be with us in this time of fellowship. In the name of Jesus, amen. I want to thank everyone, everyone that has subscribed and um, has commented and has liked, I thank you so much. You know, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes, you know, you get a little excited because you get a new subscriber and then somebody unsubscribes and it gets to your head. But then I thought to myself, you know what? That's okay. And this is what we need to remember, that we are doing the work of God, whatever it is God has called you to do. And some will be in agreement and some will not be in agreement, but you must continue to do what God has called you to do. So we are in Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. So needless to say, we have skipped a lot. We have skipped 20 chapters. So we're going to do a brief skirt through so we'll understand why this chapter 21 is just really extra exciting. So Revelations chapter 21, verse one, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And 
I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. Notice he said, It is done this time, not it is finished. He said, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake, which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. Oh, wasn't that good? All right, so let's get into this. And I've been saying this in my other lessons. I won't be before you long. Okay, so let's share this screen here. John says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. So John saw the Holy Spirit. Jesus was revealing to John the new heavens and a new earth. All of what we see here all of what we're experiencing now there's coming a time when all of that will be done away with and this is supposed to be our hope so now let's let's you know let's get into the pictures so this is a depiction of the size of this new jerusalem this new city that john um that john saw so just to give us an idea, it's covering Colorado and, and Texas and Nevada and Louisiana and Mississippi and Arkansas and, and Missouri and Nebraska and Iowa and South Dakota and Milwaukee and um, Alabama and Tennessee and some of Florida. And, you know, you might look at this and say, well, is that where are all the people? Well, you know, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7 that few are going to find the way. So I got to stay focused. Y'all, we read in verse eight, and we're going to get to that. This is why we have to make our calling and election sure, because unfortunately, Matthew 7, 21, 22, there are going to be a lot of people that say, Lord, Lord, and he's going to say, I not know you. When little children we used to babysit, I not know you. I'm not even trying to be condescending. Just trying to actually make it light. People of God, we got to get like real serious, real, real serious. Because when we look at this and if the new Jerusalem, the new city, and we're supposed to be in the new city and the new heaven and earth and the city is just that big, we want to make sure my name is on the list. Make sure your name is on the list so we can't be doing any shucking and jiving and playing around and, and dabbling with the world and, and compromising in sin and, and thinking God understands. We just, we, we just can't do it. We, we, we can't, we gotta stop. We gotta stop. All right. Here's another picture. This new Jerusalem, because later in the chapter, he talks about the different stones and, 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 and the, the gates of pearls. And so, and these are just depictions, you know, John was doing the best he can to describe what this city looked like when he said it was like a bride. Let's look at that. He said, 
um, it was prepared as a bride. Now, a lot of people say, okay, the new Jerusalem is the bride. The new Jerusalem is not the bride. The, we, the body of Christ, we are the bride. This is as, it's a comparison. So in other words, this city was beautiful. It was stunning. It was like, wow. He, you know, so he, the most beautiful thing he knew to, to use was as a bride. But that does not mean that the new Jerusalem is the bride. We, the body of Christ, are the bride. But he saw this city coming from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for a husband. So all of these new things, new heaven, new earth, the new Jerusalem. So in this Jerusalem, there's not going to be all the stuff that was going on before. Just another uh, depiction uh, of this new Jerusalem. I like these these pearls here as, as the gates and the trees, the fruit for the healing of the nation and the river. And I mean, it's just, it's, it's just beautiful. And, you know, again, again, when we talk about our new home and our new hope, you know, this is an exclusive club. You know, like me, I can't afford to be in a country club. I don't have it like that. Like, I don't have it like that. So, you know, with a country club, only certain people can get in there and you have to have a certain level of income and you got to pay your dues and all that kind of stuff. And then you get the privileges. Well, you know, heaven is like that. Heaven is for the believer. Everybody doesn't have the privileges of heaven. One time the Lord gave me this message and it basically was, why buy the cow when I can get the milk free? In other words, oftentimes we believers are, are um, um, making promises and telling unbelievers that they have these promises. All you have to do is pray. God's going to answer you. God's going to bless you. You know, the Bible says all things work together for the good. You know, we say that to, to unbelievers, but the verse says, and we know that all things work together for good for to those that love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. So those who belong to God, things work together for the good. But if you um, um, don't belong to God, that verse does not apply to you. So, you know, this is the country club. This is the, this is going to be it. Everything else is going to be passed away. And if you, if your name is not in the Lamb's book of life, you will not be in the new Jerusalem. That's just, that's just what it is. And that's why we are praying. And that's why we preach the way we do. And that's why we teach the way we do. And that's why some of us like me, we get attacked and the enemy wants to make you sad and depressed and try to get you to be quiet because God has you lifting up your voice like a trumpet and, and warning the people and saying, come on in, come on into the ark before the door gets closed because the door is closing soon. All right. So I know y'all like that don't have nothing to do with the lesson. I bet you it does. All right. You know, we come to Christ. We were an old creation. We were spiritually dead. We were in our flesh. Um, we were in the kingdom of darkness. And then through the blood of Jesus, we came to the cross and all that the cross symbolizes. And we became new creatures in Christ Jesus. We're spiritually alive. We're in the spirit and we're in the kingdom of God. We're his dear sons. And we are excited about being saved. We are excited that our sins are forgiven, that we are accepted in the beloved, that our sins have been nailed to the cross. All of the charges against us, Jesus nailed those to the cross according to Colossians. And we are so glad about that. But we also know that while we're in this world, we're going through some tribulations. We are going through some trials. And that's why this lesson is so awesome on today, because we are going to be going home soon, very soon. Jesus is going to come get us. And then we're going to have a period of time where we're going to reign on the earth. And then he's going to make all things new eternally. So I'm telling you, make sure your ticket is punched 
and make sure your bags are packed because you think things are wild now. Wait till God begins to go through the last stages of time, the last part of this redemption plan, because there's some things left for the redemption plan. And we want to make sure that you're on the right side. You want to make sure you're on the winning side. Here we go. Here's a song. Whose side are you leaning on? Leaning on the Lord's side. Hallelujah. We need to remember, Jesus said, Jesus said that he was the first and the last. He is the beginning and the end. He is the alpha and the omega. So wherever you are, wherever I am, wherever you go, wherever I go, Jesus is already there. So, you know, even sometimes we pray, I've heard people say, Lord, if you just come visit us, if you would just come down, he doesn't have to come visit us. He doesn't have to come down. He's already here because he is everywhere, everywhere Jesus is. And so think about this, this God who's everywhere, he said, I'm going to dwell with men and they're going to dwell with me and they're going to be my people and God himself shall be with them. So I want you to think about that. If God himself is going to be with them, if God himself is going to be with them as wonderful as our salvation is, we are so grateful to be saved. We thank God for the joy and the peace that we have. We thank God for deliverance. We thank God for when he comforts us and, and when he strengthens us. But yet we are still in this fallen world. We are still in this broken world. We still go, go through times of defeat. We still go through times of pain and sadness and all of those things. But he said that there's coming a time that he is going to wipe all tears away, all tears. He's going to wipe every tear away. And not only that, but we are going to be with God, not just we hope and we have by faith, but we will be changed and there will be no more struggling with sin and struggling with our flesh and, 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 and sinful desires and falling and getting up and falling and getting up. We will be new forever. We will be new forever. That's why Jesus said it is done. When he died on the cross, it was finished in terms of being able to reconcile man back to God. But when he said it is done, everything concerning redemption had been complete and he said i'm going to wipe all their tears away and there should be no more pain for the former things are past and he that sat upon the throne said behold or look i make all things new and he said unto me right for these words are true and faithful john what i'm telling you it's the truth it's going to happen you need to know it send the word now because during this time when john was writing this believers were being persecuted and they needed hope peter when he was writing believers were being persecuted and they needed hope and so god jesus tells john to write this give my people hope let them know what i'm saying it is going to happen and he said unto me it is done i am alpha and omega the beginning and the end and i will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely and, and those that are thirsting for this water are the saved i'm going to give them after 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 all that this, this physical world had been, we're going to be able to drink of this living water that is going to refresh us eternally. Drink from the water. Drink from the water. Remember the picture that I showed you? Let me, let me go back and get it here. all that water and just think about it because there's no more sickness and disease. There's no more death. Remember there's no, there's no moon and, and stars because Jesus is there. He, he's the light, like literally 
No, he's not just, I'm the light and darkness, but I mean, he's going to be the light for the city. And so remember, just real, just think about being able to reach down and, 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 and just drink some of this water and you're not worried about bacteria or bugs or, or any of those things. And it's just going to refresh your soul. So this, this is what John was saying, that they are going to be able to drink from that water. Now, I want to read this scripture here. Let me get the right scripture. Because this is so important. This is so important. When Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and I will give him that is the thirst of the world of life. He is all. What he's saying is everything is through me, about me. Everything is Jesus. I mean, and I think sometimes we don't get that. And not only is he saying I'm the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, he's he's always been. Look at what Paul said. For all things in heaven and on earth were created in him, Jesus. All things, whether visible or invisible, whether thrones or dominions, whether principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He himself is before all things and all things are held together in him. He is the head of the body, the church, as well as the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. So in other words, he's the first fruit since he died and got up and was resurrected. We're going to be resurrected too, so that he himself may become first in all things, everything. I'm the first of everything. I'm the first of everything. I'm the first to be on earth and not sin. I'm the first to die and get back up. I am the first and we're going to follow with him. So, for God was pleased to have his fullness dwell in the son. So, when he says, I am the alpha and the omega, I'm the beginning and the end, just like Paul said, everything is being held together now by him and everything is through him and by him. And that's why I love that that picture that said, I'm already there because there, there is nothing that exists or is being held together without Christ. And this is why we should say, we have this hope because this Christ that holds everything together, he is in us through the Holy Spirit. And so we should have a different mindset about the world system and everything else because of the fact of who is our Lord, who is our God. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he that overcome and shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving, and the abominable, and the murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So I got a few charts here that I want to go through real quick. And I, I don't want to belabor the part, point, but I have several here. So when he, when we talk about the second death, I want us to understand when that was. So here we have at the top here, we have the church age. That's the age that we're in now. That's the age that we're in now. And then the next time period is going to be the tribulation. This arrow here, that is between the church age and the tribulation signifies when the rapture is going to occur. So the tribulation is seven years after the and end of the tribulation, there's going to be a thousand years. And then this arrow here is going to be the second resurrection or, and it's going to be the second death. And this is what we're talking about here. So the first resurrection includes Jesus, the first fruits, it includes the Old Testament saints. When Jesus got up, when, when the veil was ripped, it's going to include the church age saints that have died before the rapture, and it's going to include us. It's going to include all those that were in Christ that died during the tribulation. So all of this, from this arrow here to this arrow here, is the first resurrection. It's the first resurrection and then the second resurrection the second death is because those that have died without god those from from generations back up into the end of of um the the end of of the millennium 
all of those are going to stay dead until the second resurrection. So if you are in the second resurrection, that means you are not going to heaven. So I got another slide here. And this kind of says the same thing. So you see here, Christ's bodily resurrection, he was the first fruit. So then we have the rapture and um, when the saints are, are caught up. So again, we know that there were saints that were resurrected. The tombs were open. They went with Jesus at that time. Those of the rapture, um, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And then those that remain, that's part of the first resurrection. Um, the Old Testament saints up to the rapture that died in faith, they're going to be caught up. That's all the first resurrection. And then when we talk about verse eight, this is the second death, the second advent of Christ, the advent of Christ. Um, when Jesus comes and he's going to set up his kingdom, he's going to judge Israel. He's going to judge the nations, the thousand years. And then after that is going to be what is called the great white throne judgment and if you are at the great white throne judgment you are going to hell which is going to the lake no believers are going to be at the great white throne judgment i know we've seen movies and so forth where everybody was at the great white throne that that's not how that works if you are a believer your sins have already been judged at the cross okay so if you look at this one here and it shows that verse 24, it talks about the end of the millennium and uh, that's a thousand years and the great white throne. If you see this yellow box here, the second resurrection revelation 24 through six, the judgment of the rest of the dead. So when we pick up in, in our lesson today, revelation 21, all of that has taken place there. There's no more, no more sinners. There's no more no more sin to be dealt with and god's gonna just purge the world so to speak so that's the second resurrection of the second death the second death so this would be the judgment of the rest of the dead and you know we have the final rebellion i don't even want to get into that but there will be a final rebellion and then that's when satan death and hell will be restored and then what we find in revelation 21 is the establishing of the eternal kingdom that's the kingdom that's going to be forever now the last thing i want to talk about and there came unto me one of the seven okay let me go back a little bit because i want to mention this before i close notice who he said will not be in the kingdom the fearful that's the cowardly the ones that don't believe the unbelieving the ones that don't believe the abominable the murderers the whoremongers that's the sexually immoral and sorcerers all those that are into to witchcraft and even to those that are into heavily into drugs because it's sorcerers of pharmacia and idolaters um, you know a man is just worshiping themselves and all liars there's no such thing as a white lie and a black lie and a little lie and a big lie shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death at the second resurrection the lake is the second death and then verse 9 he says and there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues now so in other words this was the same angel not that he's about to pour out more plagues and talk with me saying come on john i want to show you the bride the lamb's wife so in other words he's saying i want you i want to show you john you john and all those that are in the body with you. And John, I want, I want to show you Tara. And I don't know your name, but John, I want to show you them. We are going to be part of the bride. If we have repented of our sins, we are part of the bride. And I pray, I pray that you know Jesus Christ. I pray that you know that what John talks about in the book of Revelation, this is the great hope of the saints oh i know what i meant to do how much time i got left okay let me see if i can get this up here let me see if i, I meant to i meant to read this scripture i meant to read this scripture there we go and let's do this
Okay, I'll just share it like that because I know I got to go. I know I got to go. Peter says, Peter says, for the culmination of all things is near. So be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of prayer. Above all, keep your love for one another fervent because love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without complaining. Just as each one has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of the varied grace of God. Whosoever speaks, let it be with God's words. Whoever serves, do so with the strength that God supplies so that in everything God will be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. So the question that our lesson wanted to ask was, which practice in 1 Peter 4, 7 through 11 should we focus on to help prepare the church for Christ's return? Which folk, which practice should we focus on? What, what do you think? We talk about be self-controlled, be sober, love one another, let that love cover, be hospitable, don't be a complainer, use your gifts um, to, to benefit others. Say what God is giving you to say. Serve. Which one of those? Which one of those um, should we be focusing on, or should we be focusing on all of them? I say we should focus on all of them. Do you know why I say that? Because as the body of Christ, this is how we're going to be able to stay focused. This is how we're going to be able to stay strengthened. This is how. We are going to be sure that we are prepared. Peter was talking to saints that were suffering. John was talking to saints that were suffering. And even in our suffering, we have to keep looking up. We must keep living holy. No matter what our society is saying and getting into and saying is okay, we must make sure that we are saying and doing what God would have us to do. Because it won't be long. We're going to have our new bodies and we're going to be in our new homes and we're going to dwell with our God and our Savior for all eternity. So my question to you is, are you ready to meet him? If you were to die today, where would you go? Are you sure? If you don't know Jesus, I would be glad to talk to you about that and, and, and let you know how you can receive him. And, you know, don't wait. If you feel the conviction of sin, repent now. The day that you hear my voice, don't harden your heart. That's what the Holy Spirit said. So, Thank you so much for joining me in this awesome lesson about our new home. It won't be long now that we, the bride of Christ, are going to be with our husband. So let's prepare. Let's spread the news. And please keep commenting and sharing and liking and pray for me as I pray for you. Be blessed in Jesus' name.